So today we're going to look at how to debug a double release. In particular, what to do when you see this, the exe bad access. Or for you Linux folk out there, segmentation fault. A handy rule in debugging is of course to try to isolate where the bug is happening, in particular trying to figure out if you can reproduce it. And in this case we've isolated it down to trying to submit a score in our application. Now as a spoiler alert, I've already gone ahead and know that it's a double free problem, but I'm going to show you here in a second how you can find out if it is double free. Now you're going to be seeing these issues when you deal with retain counting and in particular when you don't do correct retain counting and when you're dealing with auto release pools in particular. So as we can see we've just encountered the error and unluckily for us it's in a bunch of assembly code in particular the Objective-C message send. However if you look at your stack trace on the particular thread you'll see it's actually in the auto release pool in particular when it pops the auto release pool. Now, it doesn't take a mastery in assembly language to figure out what's going on here. In particular, it's dereferencing register 0, throwing that into R4. Dereferencing R4, throwing that into R5. Well, if you remember, the first thing that's going to happen at any Objective-C object's address is going to be that is a pointer. Thus, R0 is the address of the object that we're failing on. And now, naturally, since that memory has been clobbered, two instructions later, we seg fault. Now, of course, by just expanding the registers tab, we can see what the address at R0 is. Unluckily for us, though, there's not a heck of a lot we can do. We have no idea what led up to this. We have no idea what has been clobbered prior to this. There isn't a heck of a lot that we can really do with it, even if we do try to view the memory or do other fancy footwork. However, if we combine tools, there is a different route we can take, and in particular, if we use the object allocation performance tool. Now, personally, I'm a huge fan of this tool because it allows one to really see where the malics and freeze are happening in one's program. In addition to that, it also gives one an idea of just how much memory is being allocated as your program runs, what memory is thrashing back and forth, allocating and deallocating. It really is a really good tool. Now, it doesn't solve everything for us in this particular instance, of course, because we're still going to need to know that address we're failing on. Luckily for us, however, we can just simply attach to an already running process, in particular, the process being ran by the performance tool. So, along with the debugger, we can not only find that address we're failing on, but since we're recording all those allocations and deallocations, we can use the performance tool to figure out what that address is and what is at that address, and in particular, what has been at that address. So we go back to our application and of course reproduce the bug. It doesn't take long in this particular instance for that same exe bad access to fire off. And of course, there it went. Program received signal. We can kill off the performance tool since we don't need to record anymore. And doing the same thing that we did before, we go and expand the registers and take a good look at R0. Now, keep in mind, every run of this program, that address is going to be different, so this is why we have to do both at the same time. Now, going back to our performance tool, the very first block that's going to be shown is the all allocations. Now, if you mouse over it and click that little arrow, you get to this point. And in particular, looking at all the allocations, we can sort by the address and then take a look at all the memory the program's ever used. And there is a lot of it. Now, as we're sorting by address, we simply just have to find R0 in that particular list. And it takes a while. Luckily, it's not going to take too long. But keep in mind that there's probably going to be quite a few different number of objects that have been using that particular address. So you don't really need to know about any particular one. You can just more on one particular object. Now, the nice thing about it is when you're viewing all the objects that have ever used that memory, you get a timestamp. So you can sort by that timestamp however you like and get a list of all the objects that have ever touched that memory address. Now, in this particular instance, there is a lot of objects from NS Foundation that have been going and doing things at this address, which leads to one of the other finer points of debugging. Generally, it's going to be your code that's failing. It's not going to be their code that's failing. But in particular, this particular tool lets us do a little bit more. If you go to View Extended Detail, you can actually get a stack trace 
on every capture. That is pure beauty. Now another thing about this you want to keep in mind is sometimes, not always, but sometimes you'll readily see what objects actually causing the problems because it will be allocated and never deallocated. You'll never get a negative size parameter. Now if you double click on the extended view on the stack trace it'll actually take you to the line that happened in that particular capture and if you examine your code close enough you'll find in in this particular instance a NS keyed unarchiver returned an auto release object that was never retained and that was the bug that's all it was so hopefully you learned something new and happy debugging